Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our continuing series on a technicality. And today we're talking about how to eboot PlayStation 1 betas or homebrew software and sign them for the encryption key to run on real hardware. Because Hidden Palace and Obscure Gamers did a group buy and the PlayStation 1 version of Killing Time finally leaked, I talked to the CEO of Taurus Games about a year ago and even they didn't have a copy. It's one of my favorite games so it's nice to actually get something I wanted without having to put the money in myself because I did dump a 3DO beta of this game last year on my birthday for the community. But before we get into too much, if you could do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell. It definitely helps me out a ton. But as far as eBoots and signing software for the PlayStation Portable or for the PlayStation Vita, for ways I do it, I use the following. You're going to need the USB to PlayStation Portable or Vita cable to hook it up into your computer. You're going to need a PlayStation Portable with a custom firmware, or you're going to need a Vita or PlayStation TV with a custom firmware. Either will work for the purposes we're doing, because if we use emulation, we don't really need to worry about it. And if you want to play it on a TV, I use a PlayStation Portable component cable. This is what I use hardware-wise to be able to achieve everything in software. But the PlayStation 1 version of Killing Time plays perfectly fine in RetroArch. If you don't actually want to do it on original hardware, you can emulate it. But I want to play this from my couch. So that's kind of what I'm going for here. We're going to take the redump dump and we're going to turn it into something that software will understand, a bin in a queue file. And then we're going to go ahead and turn that bin in queue into an eboot file for the PlayStation Portable or Vita. And then from there, we're going to sign the encryption key to the file so that it will boot on real hardware. Because even if you have a custom firmware, you still need signed software to run on the platform. So if it's not signed, it just throws up an error and it will not boot. But Killing Time is an awesome game. If you never played it, I definitely recommend it. But as far as what you need to achieve this for anything, if you're doing your own homebrew, if you have betas that aren't signed, first you're gonna need daemon tools, like it's free and it allows us to lay up a virtual CD-ROM drive. You're gonna need PSX to PSP version 1.42 and PRS encryptor version 3.3. These are the bits of software that are gonna allow us to make the betas run on real hardware. So taking a look at the redump dump of Killing Time for the PlayStation 1, we're going to use the dump one folder, but you'll see they have two bin files and one Q file, and that is a little bit of an issue for how we're going to be able to make that eboot. But with Daemon Tools Lite, if I just double click on that Q file, it'll create a virtual CD-ROM drive with the disk and all those bins assembled together. From there, all we need to do is use Image Burn. It's a free bit of software, and it allows us to select that virtual drive, and then we can create a custom bin in queue that'll compress both of those bins into one, which is what that PSX to PSP software is going to need, because it doesn't understand two bins. It'll use them, but you're going to be missing the second bin, and that's going to be the soundtrack in this instance. So it's important that we marry these two files together into one bin before we start. And that was a real-time view right there it's, it takes like two seconds and now you'll see that for that alpha or for the prototype we have a q file and we have a bin file so if you combine both bins into one super easy and we're ready to move to the next step so now that we have those files right there and you can see there's some folders that i've laid up to get it ready all we're going to do is bring in psx to psp because this is what turns playstation 1 games into eboots which is basically just the file that playstation portable or vita understand by default, compression set to 9. I ran with it. It works perfectly fine for me, but you could go somewhere in the middle. But all you do is select your bin, and then you select an output folder. You're going to give it a title. Do whatever title you want. If it's a game that already exists and you're ripping something from your own collection, it'll probably automatically identify that. You'll see here for the game title and main game title, give it the same name. And the game ID and main game ID work best when they match. So just pick your region and then type that number in there. And all you're going to have to do then is hit convert. And that's going to convert it into an eboot file, which is going to be what we need to put onto the PlayStation Portable or the Vita or the PSTV so that it can actually understand the software in boot. And it doesn't really take that long. I'm showing you a real-time view. It's about 45 seconds on my PC. It converts the ISO and it shows you the average compression ratio, which in this instance was right about 50%. And it just reduces the size of the file down. So now we have this eboot.pbp, and that's basically the unsigned version of Killing Time for the 3DO. Unsigned or non-encrypted eboot files will not boot on a PlayStation Portable or Vita, even with custom firmware. So we're going to sign it, and that is the easiest thing in the world. We have the PRX encryptor right here, and you have a runme.exe. All you do is put the eboot we just created in there, and you double click on runme. 
it's gonna open up this little menu. You push any button and it encrypts it for you. You really can't make a mistake on this one, but it does allow us to sign the software so that it will boot on standard PlayStation Portable or Vita equipment with a custom firmware. And then from there, all you do is move that eBoot back into the folder that PSX to PSP created. And then all we need to do is drag that right over to our root folder in the PlayStation Portable. We hook it up via USB. Go into game, copy the folder in there. I've already done it, but I'm pretending to do it right here. And then you just wait for the transfer. Transfer speeds are a little iffy, but it works. I've done this a hundred times. And you'll see now, if we do look there, I didn't put an image for the CD-ROM, so it's blank, but you can certainly put images or titles or whatever you want. It takes a little bit to boot, but you're gonna see that we now are running that Killing Time prototype for PlayStation 1 on original hardware. We've taken it from two bins to one, we've turned that bin and queue file into an eBoot file, and then we set the encryption on it, we signed it with the key so that now it'll run on real hardware. And once we set the parameters for what we want to do, and LJN, I haven't seen that name in a while, this game's way too good for LJN, Killing Time for the PlayStation 1 is now playing on original hardware versus just straight emulation. It runs perfectly, all the key assignments match really well for the PlayStation Portable, the shoulder buttons are strafed left and right, our D-pad obviously moves us, and there's plenty of keys on the PlayStation Portable to be able to do whatever it is we want with this game. And this works really well if you're doing homebrew software or if you have other betas that are undumped or that won't run on original hardware versus modding, you know, hard modding your PlayStation 1 with a mod chip, this is the way to go. And then with that cable, the component cable, I'm able to plug this right into my TV. The aspect ratio is not correct. I didn't go into the menu and set it just because I was doing this quickly. But you'll see now we're playing an alpha or a prototype from an unreleased PlayStation 1 game on original hardware on a TV, no big deal. And the software is really easy to find. I gave you the list. I will link it below as well. As far as where to find this, go to Hidden Palace. Those guys are great. And the big takeaway is it's always awesome when people do this, getting prototypes, getting betas and dumping them for the community because it allows us to experience so much more. And that's why I dumped that beta version of Killing Time for the 3DO when I bought it. I paid $300 for it and then gave it away. And I wish more people would do that. But big thanks to the guys over at Hidden Palace and Obscure Gamers for doing this group buy. Short of that, we'll be back with videos on Sunday and Tuesday, but we really appreciate you guys watching. If you could do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, helps us out. But otherwise, if you never played Killing Time, I highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite games of all time. It's got charm in spades, and if you haven't played it, definitely do. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye.